Hello and welcome to this ACCA video. If you're studying for the ACCA Strategic Business Leader exam, this video is aimed at you. My name is Sean Purcell and I have years of experience in helping students pass their ACCA exams. In this video, we're going to debrief question 3 and there are other videos in the series which will debrief the remaining questions. The aim of these videos is to give you some practical tips on how you might approach strategic business leader questions so as to gain exam confidence and maximise your success when attempting the real exam. Before we start looking at the question, I'm assuming that you've attempted the question and have a copy of the exam to hand. Question 3 is broken into three parts, with the first bit asking us to produce a memo discussing ethical and reputational concerns raised at a meeting. The second part asks us to review control weaknesses and for each weakness talk about its consequence and recommend improvements. And then the final part asks us to advise the board on advantages of setting up a separate risk committee. But before we get involved in the details of the question, there's a set of six practical steps that I think we should follow on every single strategic business leader question. They are, what role are we being asked to play? What format are we required to write our answer in? Who are we addressing, i.e. who is the audience? What verbs are being used? How many marks are available for this part of the question? And what are the professional skills marks being awarded for? If we take this step before writing any answer plan, we should minimise any chances of making mistakes. Let's have a look at uh, question three in more detail. This was the longest question on the examination, giving 40 marks, and I'm going to break each question into A, B and C. The first one asked us to discuss ethical and reputational concerns raised at the meeting for 10 marks. Second one was a summary uh, reviewing control weaknesses and uh, for each weakness talking about consequence and recommendation for improvement. That gave 14 marks. And then the final one was a briefing paper uh, talking about the advantages of establishing a separate risk committee for 8 marks. OK, let's have a look at um, question A. The first thing, is, so we're asked to do a confidential memo for Emina Budia, who's the chairman, which discusses the ethical and reputational concerns raised at the meeting. We've got 10 marks. What is our role? Well, we are an external consultant. What are we asked to do? A confidential memo. Who are we talking to? We're talking to the chairman. What is the verb? Well, it's asking us to discuss ethical and reputational concerns. How many marks? There's 10 technical marks. And professional skills marks here are awarded for us being sceptical, scepticism. So we need to have that in mind when we are developing our answer. And uh, for this, we get to the exhibit. It's probably about the emergency meeting, but also a little bit about the annual report at the beginning. The other thing I would always be conscious of is my time. So thinking about my time here, I've got 10 technical marks which I need to get. So 10 times 2.5 is equaling 25 minutes. And in answering this, as always, very, very strict, I write down my start time and I write down my finish time. Just to remind ourselves about professional skills marks, they're here for scepticism, so someone who is sceptical will be probing, um, will be questioning, not taking things at face value, and will be challenging the information that is given. So don't forget, professional skills marks, always use them as a lens via which we're going to gain the uh, technical marks. And for, for detail between the differences between different levels of professional skills, I recommend that you look at the official answer and see the difference between answers which get all the professional skills marks and those that don't get any because they didn't actually follow what we've described here from the context of probing, questioning and challenging. So just to anchor our thoughts, we are a consultant. We're sending a confidential memo to the chairman discussing ethical and reputational concerns raised at the meeting. So the chairman might need just to be 
pointed out the issues that, that could be uh, a problem for the business. Think about being sceptical in your interpretation as an external consultant. What am I getting my information from? Well, let's have a look. Firstly, I would be looking at the extracts uh, from the most recent annual report. Various things in here, but the second page of Exhibit 1 talks about how you know, the ultimate responsibility uh, of the board is to uh, make sure that it, it is looking after health and safety. And here it's responsible for minimising risks of hazards and dangers to employees and others arising from its operations. Uh, also, the health and safety manager has made recommendations for enhanced safety procedures, which will be implemented on current and future contracts. And then down at the bottom, it talks about uh, they're going to be making a commitment to honesty, avoiding false claims and misleading statements, and code of conduct and rigorous ethics training are designed to maintain stakeholder trust in the company's integrity and avoid legal penalties and reputational damage. So, you know, that kind of is something focusing what is then said in the meeting. So let's look at the meeting. Key things in the meeting I highlighted was the fact that, uh, uh, sorry, which I highlighted was the lighting um, that uh, health and safety manager uh, did visit a couple of months ago. Uh, and uh, basically the lighting seemed to be going to be fixed before the internal audit meeting, not really because it was unsafe. Uh, the health and safety managers have been off sick for quite a while, uh, no one replacing them. Also, it talks about that, you know, they did receive um, the uh, health and safety report, but they've been very busy and haven't really had time. Over the page, it then goes on to talk about the fact that lawyers have said, um, you know, don't make any statements that we're responsible, uh, don't admit responsibility. And make sure everything's tidied up and uh, give this staff a bonus um, for the stress they've had. So what do we pick from that? Well, in summary, what I picked up was health and safety issues were not actioned. This is contrary to what was said in the annual report that we highlighted a moment ago. Um, it seemed that they weren't that caring about the staff and they were just complying with internal audit. Again, that's not great. Uh, not really that bothered about a health and safety manager as they weren't replaced. They made no statement about protesters, so they don't seem that concerned about them. And it does talk about not just employees, but other stakeholders. They're going to clean up for the inspection. How does that look? Could look like a cover-up. Uh, denying all responsibilities when they don't know the full facts. Paying staff a bonus. Could that be hush money? What could that do to reputation? Well, if those things get out, how would it look? I think it would look quite bad. If we have bad reputation, that could impact on our ability to win future contracts and also could lead to further fines, which again won't make us look good from a reputational perspective. Okay, in terms of how many marks are available here, we have 10 technical marks. Yep, with regards to how many marks we're going to get per point, you may be aware from examiner articles that most of the marking schemes will award up to two marks for each developed point. However, the examining team have also made it clear that to get any marks at all, you must do more than just state some knowledge or a point from the exhibit. Knowledge always needs to be applied in the context of the case, and points from exhibits need to be explained in terms of their relevance to the requirements. This is what the examining team were referring to in the 10 Things to Learn article uh, based on the September exam. So although there are up to two marks available for each point, I think if I was being prudent, I'm going to at least cover my base of one mark per point and hopefully develop that further. But if there are 10 maximum marks, what we need to do here, we need to be thinking about uh, getting at least five. So we need to, as on other answers, nice subheading, nice explanation, talking about the what and the why um, and I think you know on this particular answer we've come up with many points in our brainstorm and um, this, there is plenty of scope for mark scoring here. The other thing to uh, think about when answering your question is we need to be thinking about professional skills marks and in the context here the professional skills marks for this particular question are 
for scepticism. Yep, so you need to be thinking when we are being sceptical, we would be having in the back of our mind those three headings of probing, questioning and challenging. And we wouldn't be taking things at face value. So um, again, looking at the technical marks through the lens of the professional skills marks are likely to ensure that you maximise not just the technical marks, but also the professional skills marks. Let's take a more detailed look at question 3B now then. We are asked to do a summary for the board to review that assesses control weaknesses discussed at the meeting, stating for each weakness its consequence and recommend improvements. 14 marks, professional skills marks here for evaluation skills. So in the same old fashion that we adopt every time, the six steps, who are we? We're a consultant. What is the format? It's a summary. Who's the audience? The board. What verbs? Three verbs here. Assess, state and recommend. Make sure we, make, we address each of them. How many marks are we after? 14. Professional skills marks in this case are for evaluation. Also, very aware of the time. 14 marks would allow me to have 35 minutes. Just to be clear on this, further information about how I get two and a half minutes a mark is available in the Over Your Shoulder article, which is on examiner guidance on the ACCA um, website. I would actually take further kind of security checks and I would write down start and finish and make sure that 35 minutes after I start, I've written it down so I know exactly when I have to stop. Professional skills marks here were for evaluation. When I'm thinking of evaluation, I'm thinking of assessing, estimating and appraising. So I'm looking at uh, the information I have to hand, considering it and making a recommended solution to all of that. So what am I going to be uh, evaluating here? Well, I think the first thing I'm going to be evaluating is Exhibit 5. I've highlighted the key things that mean something to me. Um, there's a summary about uh, that there was some protesters, there was a break-in. Further, there's uh, comments in the meetings down here. Uh, they did run someone over, potential negative publicity there. Uh, what else do we have? We have the fact that the wasn't enough security, maybe we need more. Uh, there was no reporting of a break-in, why not? There was a problem with lighting, but this wasn't followed up by health and safety, why not? Uh, there was also no replacement for the health and safety person who was off sick, so why not? And there was a report, but there was no follow-up, why not? If we look on the next page of Exhibit 5, there's someone slipped over on oil. They got run over because the lighting was poor. Is this indicative of poor site maintenance? So from reading the exhibits, which I would have done so in my reading and planning stage, that's what I'm thinking is most relevant. So to summarise what we've just said, not enough security staff, poor reporting, poor site maintenance, failure to follow up, failure to cover the sick health and safety manager. There's five points there. For each one, I'm going to talk about a consequence. I'm going to recommend improvements. For each of those, I'm going to get one for stating the weakness, one for talking about the consequence of that weakness, and one for a recommendation of improvement. So for each weakness I state, there's potential three marks. Okay, from the above, I've got five. Five times three gives me 15. I obviously don't need 15. Uh, maximum marks are 14. A pass is seven. So we need to think about our time. We need to think about how much we have, and we need to uh, allocate that appropriately to try to make sure we get over a pass mark. In terms of how I would develop each of those weaknesses into a three mark worth answer, let's have a quick look at this. So here I've identified the weakness as a problem with security firms communication. I've created a subheading. I've left some white space here. And then I've created another subheading which falls in line with the question requirements, which is consequence talked about the consequence of having poor security firm communication. I've then again left some white space and I've talked about a recommendation which here just maybe update the service level agreement. For that I'd get three marks. We need to get over seven to pass. I think that is well within all our capabilities.
Let's look at question three in more detail. Here we're required to produce a briefing paper for the next board meeting, um, advising the board on advantages of establishing a separate risk committee. Not a risk committee, a separate one. As always, we start off with our six questions. Who are we? We're a consultant. What format are we required to present this in? It's a briefing paper. Who are we talking to? The board. What verb is it being used here? It's about advising on the advantages. How many technical marks do we have? We have eight. And professional skills marks here are awarded for commercial acumen. So I set my time up. There's eight technical marks. Gives me 20 minutes. I make sure I write a start and a finish. I also think about what am I aiming for? Well, in line with other um, advice on A and B, um, Although there are eight technical marks, we need to definitely um, get a pass and get four points, which hopefully would be able to be developed to more than just four marks. But at least we cover our backs and get at least four. If we do that, we're safe and we pass the paper. Reminding ourselves about professional skills marks, we're talking about commercial acumen in which we're demonstrating awareness we're using judgment and we're showing insight. So essentially, what would be the commercial benefit to the organisation of establishing a separate risk committee? Always think about the professional skills marks as the frame in which we get the technical marks. Key point, I think, just to um, emphasise here is we're after a separate risk committee. We are not looking at the advantages of setting up a risk committee. So poor answers would just give some generic answer on what is good about having a risk committee. That is not the requirement here. The requirement here is to set up a separate risk committee and think about the commercial benefit of doing that. What do we know from the exhibits? Well, we first of all know that the current audit committee is responsible for risk and it consists entirely of non-executives. Uh, all members have accountancy financial qualifications. We might question whether that's completely suitable for uh, risk committee. They meet only every three months and they have a general responsibility for promoting sound risk management and internal control. So what do I pick up from that? Well, in summary, I would say, well, they're only non-executive directors. I think if on a risk committee, if we had actual executives uh, as well as NEDs, they could bring their actual on-the-job experience. They could, in a risk committee, only focus on risk. That is all that they look at. Uh, the current audit committee only meets every three months. I think I'd like to meet more regularly than that if there are some very pressing risk issues. Um, at present, they're all finance-qualified people. What about people who have some kind of risk qualification? Uh, that would be something we could bring on to our risk committee. And also the audit committee could then just concentrate its efforts on audit and not be diluted by uh, needs of risk management. So there's five points. I think if we did the what and the why on each of those points, we could develop those into a good two-mark answer as explained on both 3A and 3B in terms of the layout. The key thing I think you want to make sure you do is ensure your answer puts the points in the context of commercial acumen. So, you know, we would be talking about, all right, the risk committee might cost a little bit of money, but the benefits that the risk committee could bring and the money it could save might far outweigh those costs. Let's look at the key uh, lessons that we can gain from reviewing this question three. I think the first thing to just draw your attention to is that a model is not always the best way to structure an answer. If we look at question 3a and if you used an ethical model to structure your answer you would have only scored a few points and your answer would be much more theoretical than it needed to be. What the answer really required you to do was interpret what you perceived as potential ethical and reputational concerns from the information given at the meeting. Reading the requirements carefully. On 3B, this was really important. And if you fail to address the requirements asking about consequences and recommendations on the weaknesses, potentially you could score only a third of the marks that 
you would get had we dealt with consequences and recommendations. So really important to read those requirements a couple of times and make sure that your answer is in line with them. Make sure we answer in the context of the question and also use those professional skills marks as the lens through which we try to gain our technical marks. In terms of question 3C, it was asking us to think about the benefits of a separate risk committee using commercial acumen. And um, candidates who scored well did this and uh, they you know, thought about the benefits of the, you know, the commercial benefits to the business. However, those that didn't really link the professional and the technical skills together just gave a generic answer on what a risk committee does, which wasn't really what is required and wouldn't have scored many marks. Control and time and focus, 40 marks here for this question, broken down into three separate areas. So really important that we have very, very uh, good control of our time and our answer and our plan focuses on the marks that are being awarded. Critical here. And then finally, just to remind you that this is one of a series of question debriefs and you'll find lots of other fantastic resources to help you with your exam preparation at accaglobal.com. Have a look at the examiner's report and also have a look at the examiner's answer. Just remember that the examiner's answer is designed for tutorial purposes and is much more than will be expected from a student in a real exam. It's also worth having a look at the article on the 10 things to learn from the September exam paper, uh, which shares many of the insights uh, we've pointed out today. Hope you found this debrief useful and I'd just like to wish you all the very best in your future studies um, and thanks very much for listening and all the best going forward. Thank you very much.